Hi, this is Rob Beardsley with Lone Star Capital, and today I wanted to announce that I'm going to start hosting my own webinar series. This is long overdue because people always love when I uh, host webinars or educational um, videos where I'm actually sharing my screen, going deep into the numbers, providing real examples, real calculations. So I'm excited to start bringing that to you. I can't promise a frequency yet, but just know it's coming. So the first webinar topic is going to be about stress tests and the two most important stress tests in my opinion, which are the exit test and the break even test. And so these are stress tests that are focused on two different types of deals and so we'll break them down individually. Number one, we have the exit test, which is the appropriate stress test for bridge loans or for shorter term deals that are more focused on value creation. And so the way that this test works is we're focused on the exit by the name. And so that exit can come through the form of a sale or a refi. I'd argue that focusing on the refi is a more appropriate exit test because if you're just uh, you know, banking on a sale, it's easier to make the numbers work, but it's less rigorous of a test because you, know, you pretty much can always sell and get your money back and maybe earn a small return. But the challenge is, is actually to be able to refi and to do it successfully, create value and actually capture that value through the refi because obviously a lender is going to lend you to a certain value constraint, whether that be 70%, 75% or 80% LTV even, um, but never obviously the full 100%. So the way this works is you're going to go into the deal with an initial bridge loan, most likely, if we're talking about a shorter term deal and a value add scenario. And so with a bridge loan, the biggest thing we're concerned about is maturity risk, right? two years or three years down the road, that bridge loan is going to mature and you typically levered yourself to 80% of costs on the, on the bridge loan going in. And so you actually need to, you have to create value in order to be able to take out that 80% loan to cost bridge loan into a 75% LTV permanent debt. So if, you, you know, if you're not familiar, it might be hard to actually tell the difference here, but if you're going in with debt that is based on cost, right? You might buy a deal for 10 million, have $2 million of cost, and you're getting a loan based on that $12 million total cost basis. You have to create value to actually be able to take out that existing debt that was based on that $12 million cost basis at 75% of your future value basis. So it's kind of hard for me just to explain here without actually showing real example numbers, and that's why I'll be hosting a webinar about it. But that just gives you an idea of how the exit test works and what it's focused on and, and why we focus so heavily on it when we're pursuing bridge loan opportunities. And to be honest, the way that we perform our exit tests are so rigorous that very few deals actually pass when we're looking at bridge loans. And that's why we pass on so many deals uh, that might look interesting, but because they necessitate a bridge loan, we're going to pass on it. You know, we're not afraid of bridge loans. You know, many of our deals have been capitalized with bridge loans because we recognize that they're a very capital efficient uh, way to structure your deals. But at the same time, we demand a risk premium associated with the added risk of a bridge loan. Because if anybody tells you that there isn't added risk associated with a bridge loan, you know, they're wrong. Uh, there absolutely is, namely maturity risk, because instead of a 10 year timeline, you've got maybe a three year timeline and you need to make things happen in those three years. You've got a higher interest rate, so there's less cash flow. So you're really forcing yourself to actually create returns through value creation and not cash flow because you're paying higher interest and so the cash flow is not going to be as substantial. There's obviously more reasons, but that's a real quick intro on the exit test and why we focus on that for bridge loans. Now, what do you do in a permanent debt scenario or a deal that's core plus and you're really focusing on the cash flow? The exit test, while well, you could do it and lenders even do this test on a 10 year note, it's really not going to tell you very much because the reality is if you're going in at a 75% LTV or even 80% LTV, 10 years time, you're probably going to pass that exit test. The value is likely to be greater and you didn't go in with that much leverage that you, you know, can't support with permanent debt because you got permanent debt to begin with. So the exit test, while still performed and still may be important, really doesn't tell you as much. And so what to focus on actually for uh, permanent finance deals or deals where the emphasis is cash flow, not value creation, is actually a break even test or a break even occupancy. So, really quick, the way to calculate that is you take your operating expenses plus your debt service and you divide that by your net potential revenue. Now, again, 
if I have the screen share in front of me, I'll be able to show you how that breaks down and that'll make a whole lot more sense. But that's the math of it. Now the, the explanation of it is very straightforward. What is my actual economic occupancy that I need to maintain in order to break even on my cash flow and fully service my debt? So obviously breaking even is not what we want to do. We want to be pr providing actually surplus cash flow that we can distribute to our investors. But in a downside scenario, we want to know that we still have enough cash flow coming in to pay our operating expenses and service our debt. So that way we're keeping the property afloat in hard times because there's no, no sense in having a five year or a 10 year investment horizon and then getting caught somewhere in the middle because you had a few lean months or COVID hit or you had some, you know, a flood or something and some large vacancy occur. You know, you need to have the ample reserves and a high enough or rather a low enough break even occupancy level to stay afloat. One of my favorite Howard Marks quotes is never forget the six foot tall man who drowned crossing the lake that's five feet tall on average right? The average depth of the lake may only be five feet, but maybe there were portions of that crossing of the lake that were six feet, seven feet, eight feet, and the six foot tall man crossing through didn't make it. So we don't survive on averages. We need to make sure that during the lean times we can get through them. And that's the break even occupancy test. So I hope you enjoyed that quick teaser on the, the two most important stress tests that we focus on for both um, value add and opportunistic deals, as well as permanent finance cash flow deals. Thanks for watching.